Hello again, and welcome back. Um, hope everyone's staying healthy and happy out there. Um, I'll give you a little video, hopefully to take your mind off some of the crap that's going on at the moment. Um, today I want to talk to you today about replacing drums um, by creating MIDI files that you can then trigger drum samplers from. There's various ways of doing this. Um, I've tried Melodyne, I've tried all these other kind of various different avenues that you can take and I found this one for what I want to do with this project is it's the drums are very very dynamic and I want to keep those dynamics within the, the recording and the produced MIDI so I'm using this method using two free plugins that come with Reaper so without further ado uh, first I want to open up my actions list and I want to type in transient and in here, I've already marked it with Control Alt Shift T, but it's transient detection sensitivity threshold adjust. So if we open that up, that opens this little box here. Um, and then when you select an item, you'll see these two lines here. So we can actually adjust the threshold to detect the size of the transients within our item. So that will make sense shortly. Um, we also want to open up on the actual track that we're working on. In this case, I'm going to show you how I work on the kick. Um, we type into our JS plugins folder, type in drum. As you can see, I've done down here at the bottom. It's probably quite small. And up here, you see audio to MIDI drum trigger. Okay. I've got two of them in here for some reason, but it doesn't matter. They're both the same thing. So we open that up. So that's the two plugins that we need. Now, what I've also done on an, a separate track, I've op opened up a track with MT Power Drummer, in this case, on it, just for, as example purposes. In our transient detector here, set it up so that we can detect the transients. Now, as I said, these drum tracks are very dynamic, so you can see the kick starts out quite quiet, and then it gets very loud later on in the track. Now... The caveat I'm going to give you on this is I tend to do the track section by section. If I've got a quieter section, I will produce the MIDI for that first. And then when the louder sections, I'll re-detect the transient size. Because as you can see here, the initial small transients that I'm detecting, we're only getting one hit. When you go to the bigger ones, you can see the wave file. That's the biggest one is actually, it's one drum hit, but you can see it's got one, two, three peaks there. Sometimes the drum trigger will detect three peaks if we leave the transient settings the same. Okay, so just understand that. So if we work on this quieter section first, so we've de detected our transients, make sure it clips all of them, even if it just gets like one side of it, doesn't matter, it'll detect it. I'll bring it down a little bit. Okay, so this will be good enough for our quieter section. I just want to make sure it doesn't hit two sections of the wave file. And then what we'll do is we open up our drum MIDI replace. Now, there's a few little things we need to sort out on here. First of all, the reason we did the threshold detection is so that we can enter it in here. We're basically entering a gate setting. So let's put that in as minus 14.8. And we'll do that for both the in and out, uh, the open and close. What we need to do now is d decide what MIDI note we're going to trigger. What we'll do is we'll just create a, a MIDI item here for um, for our drum. Now if we go to piano roll, yep, C2 as usual. Now to find out what actual MIDI note that is, if we go up to the top here and open up this section, it shows us the numbers. The, the MIDI notes, so it's number 36, which is the usual one for a kick drum. So we can close that, and in here, in MIDI note, we can enter in 36. So that says all ready to detect an output MIDI from here. The next step is to insert a new track. I'm going to call it uh, Kick MIDI. And I'm going to send from the kick track into the kick MIDI track. I don't want any audio. And I want MIDI, and I'm just going to put all. Okay. So if we set this track up to record output MIDI. 
So now that we've sent from this track into here, this is now set to record its output, which will be MIDI. If we get rid of this for the moment. If we hit record, you'll notice that we're recording some MIDI notes down here. Now, what we can then do from here is send up to our empty power kit select none and we want MIDI all. Now we should be sending out a kick note and we are. You'll notice that we're recording some MIDI okay so then what we'll do is we'll record we can record the output of this quiet section Okay, so now that we've got that, there is one little problem with the, the drum MIDI trigger. If we open up the, the actual MIDI that we've produced, you can see it's quite quiet. Now what I would advise to do is go to your louder section and let's open up the transient transit detector and let's set this up to detect these bigger hits and then record a louder section so if we do open it up so check we're getting all of these as some quieter ones so we shouldn't get any double hits now so that's minus 8.2 so then we go back into our MIDI trigger and we reset the thresholds as minus 8.2 and the out as minus 8.2 as well. We're still on note 36. So this we can put to one side for the moment. I mean you can keep this transient detection up on the, the screen and then whatever um, item you select it will automatically show the lines for that item, your transients. Okay. So now what we'll do is if we record a section of the louder drums, so once again if we just hit record, so I'll just do a small section for you here, okay, so as you can see in here they're still quite quiet even though those were really hard hits. Now what I will do, obviously I'll record the whole song, but just to sh for demonstration purposes, I will then consolidate all the take, all the bits of the songs together, all the little bits of them, recording quieter bits or louder bits, consolidate them all into one MIDI item, then we can go in and we can hit Control A or Command A to, to select all the notes and pull up the um, velocities on your harder hits till the hardest ones are just underneath full. So that will bring up the softer hits relatively to what the louder ones are. Um, so just pull them up and then what we can do is if we switch out, switch off the drum trigger, mute the actual kick and we just play our MIDI that we recorded. So you can hear that they're still keeping all the dynamics. Here. Now you can flatten the dynamics out a little bit if you want. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so that's how I go about replacing drums using only plugins that are in Reaper. It's all free. So I hope you find that useful. Hope it's helpful. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.